I guess I have to say at the, the outset, uh, last week was kind of a, uh, a really busy week, so I, I can't say that I gave this chapter its all. Um, plus, I think towards the end for the geo example, I, I'm not sure that I'll be able to do it justice. Uh, I can probably do a lot of hand waving. I, I, I get the gist of what's going on, but I'm not um, I'm not as uh, don't don't feel as confident about how how it's happening exactly as maybe maybe I should. If if others once we arrive at that point, if others have a, a better handle on that, feel free to to, to jump in. Um, uh, with that said, uh, let me just get started in, in the linking widgets uh, uh, chapter. So, um, as Russ was saying, this is a chapter that's that's really about um, that's kind of about two things. Uh, I mean, the ultimate objective is to link two two JavaScript widgets via crosstalk. But uh, um, in in arriving at that destination, we kind of learn a little bit about about crosstalk itself. Um, in case in case we weren't that familiar with it, so um, uh, I'll just can I give a brief overview of crosstalk um, and 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 then then dive into uh, how this would work on uh, um, with with JavaScript widgets? So I think it's kind of nice to start with a few motivating examples. Maybe I'll just start with the most basic example. I stripped this directly from the book, um, and yeah, I'll just open this up. So I have a lot going on, on my computer, so it's turning a bit slowly today. Um, so anyway, this is this is kind of a, a basic uh, a basic example in crosstalk. I mean, have, let's I guess have a quick look at the code here. So really, what's going on is uh, with with crosstalk, we're we're creating a, a shared a, a data set cars, um, uh, and then sharing it between two widgets, uh, and sharing it in such a way that what happens in in uh, one widget affects what happens in the other. So to kind of provide a little bit more for that uh, uh, that kind of intuition. So here on the left-hand side, I have a, a plotly table, sorry, rather a plotly graph. And on the right-hand side, a, a, a DT uh, table. Um, and if I, make a, if I make one or more selections on the right-hand table, you can see how it affects the left-hand table. So the, the the observations that I'm selecting in the right-hand table are highlighted for us in a certain fashion in Plotly on, on the left. Um, actually, uh, yeah. So in that way, you can see that kind of you you can have two you can have two two plots that are you know interacting with 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 one another. Or sorry. Uh, two widgets that are interacting with one another. So you've got, you know, Plotly, which is a JavaScript widget, uh, and then Data Table, which is another JavaScript widget that are effectively talking to each other. Um, uh, you know, one is kind of registering the clicks that we make in selections on the table, and then making um, changes on uh, on the side with the the graph. Right. Um, just for um, to make sure that the intuition is kind of solid. I'll, I'll show another quickly another example with with shiny. This is a bit more of a simplistic um, simplistic example, but hopefully kind of still cements the uh, uh, the intuition here. Um, so on the on the on the left hand side we have you know, a simple text that says uh, that gives the number of selections. On the right hand side you have uh, you have uh, data table. So as I as I make selections in the right hand table, uh, the the text on the left hand side gets updated. So if I've got three selections, it shows three, two, two, one, one, zero, zero, etc. So in that way, you know, shiny uh, shiny uh, is able to do the same thing that we saw with kind of just a regular um, HTML document. Um, it 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 takes it takes an input. Um, so um, you know, we have some shared data between the two. Um, again, the cars data set. Um, it's called SD right here, uh, and and it's shared by both of uh, both of kind of the, the server side functions here. So on on the one hand, um, uh, the, the the text, uh, and on the other hand, the um, uh, the table. So you've got the SD right here, uh, and SD uh, data right right here. Uh, there's a little bit more going on with with uh, this for the getting the numbers of selected, but the the key the key kind of intuition here is is that uh, this shared data set um, is is shared by both uh, such that um, any changes in one widget kind of uh, or rather changes in the table uh, affect 
affect the this this output uh, this text output that we have right here. So you may be then wondering, kind of, how does crosstalk talk across two apps? Um, so in, in in a few ways. Um, for the first way is, uh, uh, is is through shared data. So we'd mentioned this a few times. I just want to draw the focus on kind of the syntax here. Uh, so we create a shared data set. Um, with this syntax, your shared data dot new, a new uh, shared data set, and then define the data set. So in this case, it's just the first two uh, first two rows of the cars data set that's set to SD cars. But what's worth noting is that this this data this uh, this data table isn't a simple data frame. Uh, there's more going on here, right? Uh, so if you look at the class of this of this object, it, it's not just a it's not a data frame. Uh, it's a shared, it has two classes, a shared data and then R6. Um, uh, so you can see that it, it's, 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 it's not at all a, a regular data frame. And then if you kind of inspect the object uh, to kind of, you can see that there's really quite a lot going on here. This uh, I think ends up being an environment. Um, and there are many interesting things going on, several of which we'll, we'll, we'll see, we'll see later uh, that uh, you've got certain functions that are that are available for returning certain things, like the uh, about the data, so you can kind of get the uh, the data itself, um, uh, the group name, which we'll come back to, uh, the keys, uh, the original data. So uh, in this case, the original data is the cars data set, um, and we're kind of wrapping a like a special environment around it, um, uh, et cetera. Um, so there's a lot, a lot more going on here through this this shared data object. Yes, at the at at the, at the base we have we have a data frame, um, but there are certain attributes about the data frame that help crosstalk communicate between one app and another. So then, how does it communicate? Um, you've you've got uh, keys, um, and you know really kind of keys are the keys for for communicating. Um, keys are basically, um, uh, as you can I think it's this nice graspal, graphical example shows um, in here, you can think of keys as kind of like the an ID, uh, an ID variable um, uh, for for a data frame, right? So in this case, with the car's data set, you've got two ver two uh, two columns, speed and distance, and then you have the keys, which are basically the the, the row the row names. Um, uh, so, the, in, in the in the shared in the shared data set, you've got you've got keys, um, and and the keys facilitate kind of communication in, in, in the following in the following way. So the data set's shared, um, and you know you can think of this kind of model like you have an action in widget one. Like let's imagine you select you select a, a row in, in a data table, right? Um, and the data table, uh, you know, basically. The crosswalk kind of listens for, for for those actions, you know, captures the key, and and then kind of passes that key to the widget number two. Um, widget number two is kind of listening for for those keys emitted from from widget one, and then receives the 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 key for uh, uh, from widget one, and then makes changes in, in widget two uh, for for that key received from from widget one. Uh, so basically, kind of. Crosstalks kind of common, like the lingua franca between the two is just, just these keys in the in the common data frame. So let's say, for example, we selected row one in the in the uh, data frame in widget one, then um, the key would be one, and that would be transmitted to the second widget. Second widget would basically see that we're talking about uh, the uh, uh, about row one, or, or rather the row with the, the key key one. Um, so that's all well and good, but where do these where do these keys come from. So there are kind of two options that I, I understand from the book. You know, one is that uh, the the keys the keys could come from uh, uh, the data set, the data frame itself. Um, so kind of coming back to this, whoops, sorry. Uh, coming back to this example here uh, with uh, the cars, the cars data set. Um, So here you, you can see, as you would expect for you know any data frame, you've got the columns, and then you've got these are kind of the row name, uh, the row names which happen to be kind of sequential sequential numbers. So in that case, the keys for this uh, for this data set 
um, are, are 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 the row numbers. So you can either you can either take uh, you can either <clears throat> take the keys that exist uh, in, in the data frame. So the data frame is constructed in such a fashion that there are keys, um, or, you can, or you, can, you can assign keys uh, after, after the fact. But the essential part is that you have, you have keys, kind of unique identifiers that allow you to identify with a single column, um, the, the uh, uh, observation in, in, in the data set so that when widget one is looking to the shared data frame um, and receives key three, it knows where to look, just as widget two looking in the same shared data frame knows knows where to look. Um, let me stop and see if there are any any questions. I see a look of puzzlement on your on your face, uh, Russ. <laughs> That's uh, not entirely uncommon. Um, yeah, um, I, what I find interesting is that this is like an it's like an R solution to a problem that probably exists for JavaScript developers more generally. Yep. And, um, I, 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 but I, I couldn't find any kind of examples of how you, how, how you share data between um, like JavaScript widgets if you are writing, you know, plotly code directly into a HTML document or, or, or you know, equivalent if if r isn't in the loop how do you do this kind of thing um and it is it is but that side that, that i couldn't find any examples it doesn't mean a great deal because i find it quite hard to search for stuff in javascript anyway um but um the the approach though i quite like that um that you have a a, a kind of you use the kind of effectively row indices to yep. um, su subset the data frame. And yep. because, um, you know, uh, one widget can modify those keys and those keys, the, the modified version of those keys will influence the other and vice versa. You can go from, you, presumably you can have as many widgets as you want, all depending on the same data frame. Um, yeah, I just think it's really neat. Um, uh, but yeah, I don't, I don't have many questions yet. To be honest, it's been a bit of a kind of um, baptism by fire because I don't know a good deal about R6 objects. And, nor, uh, nor do I, honestly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I've uh, uh, Ryan and I are in, also in the the advanced R uh, book club, and we haven't we haven't come to that yet. It's 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 on the horizon. Uh, I mean, I guess it's kind of like something mm. that allows you to. Uh, have object-oriented programming in R, but that's that that one-liner uh, is about all I know about R R R six <laughs> objects, sadly. But I mean, to your point, Russ, like about about the you know, is this must be a problem that you know JavaScript developers face all the time, and how do they they solve it? I mean, I wonder if it's just something as as pedestrian as they just take the end you know, they just take the index just as we're we're doing except i guess in javascript the only difference is that it's i guess it's zero 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 indexed uh but but otherwise you're just taking the index uh from this kind of shared this shared object that i guess is like public enough like that it's visible to to like n number of apps uh or sorry n number of widgets uh yeah 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 cool but um yeah. So anyway, that's 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 keys. Uh, I, uh, so I mean, so far it, it, it's kind of simple. I guess maybe we can add a little bit, like one layer of complication, and that um, I guess observations and and um, observation. Well, sorry, rows of data frames. I guess in our terms um, are kind of indexed and in, in or well, they're. Their address is kind of defined in two ways, right? So first is keys, which you know kind of intuitively could just be the the index of of, of a particular row, but also, and I guess maybe by way of comparison to, to R perhaps, is within groups. Um, so it, 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 it basically, if you have a widget, um, if you have several widgets that are looking at the same, all right, maybe I'll go to let me go to the author's uh, visual example. I should have should have brought this in. This is this is actually quite quite helpful. So like imagine you have these five widgets here. Sorry, let me make this a little larger. Uh, these 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 five widgets here. Um, you know, two widgets 
work in group one, uh, you know, draw on data that are made available in, in group one, and, and you have, uh, you know, three other widgets that are that are drawing on data in, in group two. So I guess maybe in our terms, I might translate this, at least based on my surface deep understanding here, uh, it, it is in, in effect, like we could think of this as sort of like a, a data frame, like a group is sort of akin to a data frame and keys would be would be kind of the the, the row indices uh, uh, within within the data frame. So in that way, a widget, um, you know, that's looking at uh, row, so if it's looking in our terms, kind of at row one in, in in data frame one, coming into JavaScript or well, at least crosstalk. I don't know if this is crosstalk or or, or, or JavaScript or, or some combination of both, but at least in in, in crosstalk, uh, you know, you're you're looking at um, you know group one, which is kind of our data frame one, and you're looking at particular keys within within that, that data frame. Um, what's also kind of interesting about this example too um, uh, is, is that, uh, you know, with, within a group, my understanding is you can, you can actually have multiple data sets, but, it, but provided that those data sets share, there's some overlap in the, in the keys between the two. Uh, and, and actually, I think this intuition, at least this is a helpful example from the author, I think later on in the chapter. So, you know, either you have one data set that's, that, that comprises the entire group, right? Um, uh, uh, you know, in which case, you know, let's just take this like shared cars this is the cars data set. Let's, or empty, in this case, you know, empty cars data set. Let's call it cars, the group called cars. Uh, you know, here we just have a single, a single data frame um, that's in the shared in the shared data set. But we could also have, and this is the interesting point, um, you know, multiple data sets provide uh, uh, that are part of the same group, provided that they share keys. So here, let's have the you know, empty cars uh, in both instances. Um, uh, in and uh, you know, here we've got we've got. Uh, the shared data set called shared cars, which is the entirety of the empty cars data set. Uh, and, and then we can just take the head um, uh, of the empty cars data set, call it shared cars head, but the group is the same. So cars uh, right right here. And the important part is, you know, be, because, you know, this is just a subset, this is just a subset uh, uh, of, of this with the same row indices, you can, you can actually kind of talk about the elements, uh, you know, they have a common set of keys. So row one, in empty cars, the entire data set is the same as row one and the, the head of empty cars. Maybe that's an unnecessary complication <laughs> for, for people that are trying to, to, to under, to kind of like us who are trying to get our, uh, our bearings here, but I thought it was kind of interesting that, you know, you within a, a group could consist of basically one or more, one or more um, shared data sets, provided that those shared data sets share uh, keys. But coming back to the notion of group, like group is, at least in my understanding, is sort of akin to a, a data, a, like a data frame or like a set, I guess maybe more broadly, like a collection of data um, uh, that in some cases could be actually a data frame, just like a single data frame. Um, uh, and then that that group uh, will work with a set of widgets. A set of widgets will kind of, you know, work with the keys of that that group to kind of do do their, their business logic. Um, but you could also have the case where a, a group consists of several data sets where each one of those uh, data sets or rather data frames uh, has has a, a has a common set of, of keys and widgets can kind of work work with the work with that group of or collection of uh, data frames. Right. That's cool. Presumably that's like, I mean, I'm trying to think of an example of how I would what where I would need two data sets that share keys. Um, so, like, I'm kind of thinking, because effectively a, a, a key selects a specific row from a given data set. So yes. presumably you would expect the, the data sets to be the same um have the same number of rows and or, or maybe i'm wrong um but um yeah i uh so i i could imagine that you might have like a, a matrix of, of numerical data 
and a data frame containing like metadata for corresponding to each of the rows in the matrix or something like that that the so that you can annotate things on plots or something like that um yeah i, I mean it's quite neat I, this isn't something that i expected when i was reading it. i thought it would end i, I thought that crosstalk would end up being a, a, a single data frame being used by multiple widgets i didn't expect to see multiple data frames in yeah being i think I, I could have the wrong understanding here but i think um i guess one of my one of my favorite JavaScript, uh, uh, well, R functions that kind of wraps JavaScript uh, re reactable. That they, they've actually got some nice examples. Maybe I'll, I'll drop in, in in Slack after the, the meeting. Um, it, they they look at kind of like nested data tables. So where maybe you have, um, you you have ten rows. Uh, in, 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 the data, in the data table. And then uh, you can kind of look at more detailed. Uh, uh, so, so like imagine your data table <clears throat> at the outset kind of, um, maybe let me just go to rather than make, do a lot of hand waving. Uh, Here we are. Um, so here's, uh, you know, like imagine you've got something like, uh, like the data table at, at this level is like summary, summary statistics. Let's imagine, and then you could expand the rows and see, you know, more more details. This is maybe a poor visual example, but you can kind of imagine that's the case. Like you have, uh, I, I don't know, statistics on 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 classrooms. Uh, uh, you know, like the average the average grade in a particular classroom for a school. Each row uh, uh, is a classroom, and then you could expand a row and look at the 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 grades, the level of each in individual person. So in that case, like there'd be shared keys of the of the classroom between the two the two data frames. So I'm I'm, I'm guessing that that's what's going on with could be going on with crosswalk or, or sorry cross talk, uh, um, um, or not the only use case, but maybe like a use case where it might make sense to have multiple data frames uh, in a group that share that share a common set of keys. But the keys, I guess, in this case, wouldn't be like I, maybe I misspoke earlier. I don't know if there'd be a restriction where they'd be uniquely identifying. Um, you know, maybe you could have several observations in the data frame that share the share a set of keys, or rather, share the same key. Arthur, if you don't mind me jumping sure. in or a comment, so. Uh, Russ, what I was thinking about as Arthur's explaining this, I dropped a link to the R6 uh, library or the or the uh, the package, not package, the 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 uh, object ID or object definition of an R6 class. Not combining with the other example or other book club that Arthur's referring to, but we are actually in a really in-depth conversation on this particular topic of memory space. And what I want to what I want to compare that with is an earlier comment you made about just just database keys, right? So don't I want to be careful with the term database because we can have different ways in which we're linking data together, and the dplyr and mutate uh, uh, grouping uh, thought is in the back of my mind as I'm expressing this. But when you join tables together, obviously they have to have uniqueness between the two. So how do you how do you link these two data sets that may be different from each other? What are the common elements that would be able to join these two points together? And the the idea of this R6 class and the last sentence is the most important of the first paragraph. It just says that uh, it's more efficient and it doesn't depend on the S4 class and the methods package to manage this information. Now that's that's critical to this topic at hand because in that advanced R chapter six functions book, we're talking about these different S3, S4 classifications and the use method uh, so that the, the method package within R and, and how it manages that type of attribute. Uh, if it's an integer, if it's a character, if it's a Boolean value, whatever the case may be, right? Um, Within R, it's gonna it's gonna use different uh, 
application to render or, or manipulate that value in the R6 class, we don't worry about that. And what, what I'm comparing this to is the difference between a SQL database, a, a traditional database type mindset versus a no SQL database, just a big JSON file of, you know, uh, uh, attributes uh, uh, named, um, I guess you could call them columns in a, in a data frame, uh, the, the named value, and then what that row has associated to. So the, the combination of crosstalk, what we're looking at is that unique uh, naming convention. If it's the index, like Arthur was mentioning, the one, two, three, four, five, six, just the iteration of that value, or if it's literally a named memory space, the, 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 JavaScript packages accessing the the uniqueness between the two of them. If they're the same value, then we can we can share them across it. That that shared space mindset. Um, Arthur, if you don't mind, do you can you go back to the to the uh, book and the the uh, yes. So I believe the the box keys in group one and then the keys in group two, two completely different services. But we'll just use the one on the left. Crosstalk is allowing access from widget one and widget two using the keys and then being able to concatenate or combine between two data sets. So we have different um, characteristics between these values, two different data sets. But when you combine them together through crosstalk, or at least in this widget mindset, it's just accessing through those shared keys to those other two data sets. My comparison would be similar to a dplyr and a, and a join function, or, or a, I don't think mutate's the right one that I need, but um, there is that, that left join, right join type thought process that uh, they were using. And then the fact that it's an R6 class and doesn't require the methods piece is how I'm throwing in the differences between SQL and no SQL. Um, I'm combining two different subjects and I'm rambling, so forgive me. No, it's all it's all it's all good, Ryan. I, I actually, I, I think you're 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 right about keys keys here. I'd be careful, kind of about the the, the jargon. I mean, basically, it's it's sort of like you're you're like widgets one and widgets two are like accessing a shared either a single shared data set or two data sets that are members of the same group that share the same keys. And it's sort of just my understanding is basically just an access, like you know. Widget one, you know, give me give me the the all of the attributes of the record with index one, and then widget two is doing the same, uh, potentially the same thing, right? Depending on kind of how these are related. If it's just a matter of like widget one, um, you know, widget one has a like let's imagine like select and deselect rows as we as as we saw with the 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 data table example earlier. So if widget one selects row one, then it's it's going to kind of emit. Uh, um, it's going to emit like uh, uh, the, the key, the key um, I mean, we haven't gotten to this part yet, but it's going to kind of like emit a key, uh, said, okay, I've selected row, row with the row with index one, and then pass it to widget two, and then widget two is going to go to, you know, via that same key, go back to the data frame, and then it'll, it'll access the, it'll access the corresponding um, data uh, in whatever form that, that might be. Yeah. There's a there's a unique function, correct, in in R or in data frames where you can just call out, um, you know, I'm using the empty cards as an example, but you know, tell me how many um, how many groups we have that have a, a V6 engine or a, a V4 engine, uh, or or I think is there a V8 in there as well? Um, how many index indices are using that one? character, uh, that, that one attribute. So tell me how many highlight the V8 engine, right? And so the, the, the crosstalk is going to use that same argument in passing it to the other widget so that you have this mutual relationship between the two. But I'm, my examples of V4, V6, and V8, those are arbitrary. It can be really anything that is unique between the two. It's using that index to go back and forth between multiple data sets, correct? It, I mean, in honesty, I, in honesty, Ryan, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I, I think that the, 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 the examples I've, well, the little, the little tinkering I've done with crosstalk, I mean, outside of this book, kind of for my own purposes and what I, I'm reading and cross the, what I think I'm understanding from this, this chapter is it, 
it 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 might really just work on the level of of um of, of indices you know so kind of like row row index within within the the the, the data frame um i don't know that there's any way within crosstalk to kind of do like a any other more sophisticated kind of query i i if i can kind of put it in those terms i think it's it's really just on the basis of sort of like you know i've selected i've selected you know, with widget one, let's say I've selected something with row index five, then widget two needs to needs to return, you know, the all the things with row index five as well. I'm I'm not sure I'm not sure that you can. So I guess these are sort of like key well data sets that are just like keys and values or sets of values, uh, and so I think it's just operating within this this common key which is exactly the same variable but between you know effectively like the row index between the two um <clears throat> and then it's just kind of serving as like a like a lookup you know it's like just give me that thing or those things that um that have a particular particular key i i don't know i don't know that there's within crosstalk like an accessor function that would be able to operate on the values in the in the in the data set. Or at least I've not worked with that, and the, and the examples in the chapter don't don't seem to work with that. But it'd be interesting to see if that were the case. Well, I'm I'm getting all sorts of uber excited, and I'm pinging Russ on the side as I'm as you're as you're discussing. But um, my question to the team or to the group in this video, if anybody's ever worked with the Elasticsearch engine from a web services standpoint, not databasing administration, I'm just talking about interacting with the Elasticsearch engine, or more importantly, is Apache Lucene being able to drop in and, and start to do these um, really awesome, fancy sort of combinations between multiple data sets. It's not related directly to the topic that we're discussing in this chapter or, or related to the, to the uh, conversation, but that concept is similar to what is what Crosstalk is doing, allowing us to do. Uh, with these multiple widgets, um, I'll try to I'll try to find a use case example. It won't be related to the book. It'll it'll have JavaScript relation, but um, it might solidify kind of the concept of of how these um, services are interacting with each other or that that common key concept. Yeah. Cool. Looking forward to it, Ryan. Um... <laughs> Was there anything on more on the like the keys and the groups uh, that are um, for, for for crosstalk? I, d I don't think so. I I think it certainly the 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 idea about using keys just seem seems quite straightforward. Um, yeah. I I was wondering whether it's possible to use like a pair of columns in a data frame to define a key. Um, it it seems mm. to work based on either a named column that defines a, a kind of unique attribute or on the, um, oh no, that's not true. It, it, it either based on the row names of the data frame or on the row indexes of the, of, of the data frame. No, actually uh, you're, you're right, um, uh, Russ. I, I think in, in the end where, you know, the author kind of brings everything together with the, you know, case for geo, um, you one is able to set the to basically to select a named column within the data set as uh, as um, uh, as an index because with geo you know we're looking at the arc kind of like uh, we're looking at the arc between the in the the exporting the, or see the importing country and the exporting country um so in in that particular case you know the sort of like a the row index wouldn't make much sense um yeah, and instead we'd have to select some element of that relationship between kind of you know the the and the trade relationship between the importing country and the and the, and the exporting country. So you can select I, I've seen certainly individual columns. I'm not sure if you can select multiple columns. That okay. that would be interesting to 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 explore. Home, homework, homework for afterwards, I think. Uh yeah. Uh Okay, so next, bringing it bringing it back to to kind of geo, and then how how you know how one would um, bring how one would utilize 
how one would set up a widget to utilize crosstalk, right? Um, because, you know, crosstalk isn't magic. It, 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 I mean, it has something magical about it, I guess, but it, it's not magic. We need uh, as, as, uh, as developers to, uh, to, to uh, create our widgets, create our packages in such a way that they, they recognize um, uh, they work with crosstalk. And the changes that need to be made on the uh, first on the R code side, then on the JavaScript side, JavaScript side is where I'll, I'll start to get uh, horribly lost. Um, for, for the for the R side, you know, you need to do a few things. First, um, you know, with with our geo function previously, remember we were just taking we were taking data, uh, uh, um, we were taking uh, like a data frame, an R data frame, and then transforming it internally, but the important part is we're taking our data frame. Now with, with remember with crosstalk, we're not working with a simple plain vanilla data frame. We're, we're working with a shared data object, uh, which has uh, some other things about it. So first thing we need to do within the, uh, within the function, this is the same geo function that we, we, we had from previously, uh, from, from earlier is uh, we need to uh, basically have a little, a uh, little switch here. You know, if, if, if the, the the thing that we that the user of the function passes in as in the data argument <clears throat> is is a shared data set, then we need to um, we need to capture some uh, metadata about the the shared data set. Um, so first, you know, we need to have this little control. If it uses cross, if if the data if, if what's passed in as data is something um, from from crosstalk, then we need to recognize that it is. Having recognized that it is, then we need to capture some information that we'll need um, to get the widget up and running. First, we'll need to capture the original data. So um, actually, if you recall, uh, probably I went over this really fast. There's this little function original data uh, and what we are seeing at this, this shared data, the object. Um, there's there's a function that you can use uh, on the data to actually access the the, the data frame that um, that that we Kind of pass to the shared data um, function, I guess. Uh, um, so we can recover that because at the end of the day, um, that's that's what we want for JavaScript, right? We want to pass the the the, the data frame to, uh, well, I guess first to R for further processing into the form, in the case of Geo, into the form that is needed by 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 Geo uh, by our widget. But basically, our widget needs needs data, not some um, some Additional like abstraction of the uh, layer of abstraction kind of uh, on top of the data. Uh, also, since uh, we we need a we need a group name so that we can kind of isolate and the widgets that are working together they can work from a common a common group. So we're going to take uh, we're going to capture you know, extract the group name um, from uh, the group name that we set when we instantiated the uh, the shared data uh, object. Uh, and then uh, the last thing that we need to do is because we're working, you know, if if what we pass into the function is indeed across a, a, a shared data set created by crosstalk, our function needs to have a dependency on crosstalk. And so we're setting this dependency here uh, on crosstalk. Uh, and then later within when we're using the create widget function, we're passing that that kind of dependency object uh, into um, into the create widget function. So those are the changes that need to be made on 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 the on the R side. So again, just recognize the function needs to be needs to check whether data objects passed to it are shared data objects, and if so, capture some some information um, uh, for 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 later usage. Uh, so the 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 original data. So this would be an R data frame, uh, the group name, uh, and then we need to set a crosstalk dependency. Now we come to JavaScript and where I'll do a lot uh, more kind of hand waving than I'm already doing. Um, uh, so b basically on the JavaScript side, it, it seems like, so the, Java, the JavaScript, on the JavaScript side, our widgets need to number one, be aware of the selections that are made uh, and then have some infrastructure that such that the, the widgets can um, send a key so the key of the selected thing to another widget, and also receive from another widget uh, a key, so that there's there's uh, uh, bi-directional communication between between the two. So the first step, 
uh, is to kind of register the selection. So in 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 Geo, um, you know, for example, if I'm just clicking on the map here, uh, here I'm looking at the trade relationship between uh, Russia and China. Am I right on that? Um, yeah, Russia and China, um, and uh, yeah, with Mongolia wedge between. I think uh, so. Uh, Russia and China, uh, or if I select China, then I can see, I guess, the set of trade relationships where China is the, I guess, the exporting country, uh, exporting to Russia and then to Canada. So um, there, there are selections that are made within, um, within the 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 the, the JavaScript. Um, uh, widget. Um, so first, we need to have we need to basically put in place what what the author calls, and I'm sure this is a common knowledge term within the JavaScript world, is a, a selection handler. Um, so basically, uh, uh, we're we're just uh, uh, you know instantiating a, a selection handler uh, here as, as a variable. Um, my kind of loose understanding is that this is going to kind of capture the end the the key uh, of the things selected within uh, JavaScript, uh, within the UI. Uh, and then also we're adding, to, after we've you know, like instantiated this handler, we're then, we're then setting the name, uh, the group name that came from, from, from Crosstalk, right? So remember on the R side, uh, on the R side, we had uh, this, 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 this group name, right? Um, and that's getting passed uh, to JavaScript so remember our just kind of X catch-all uh, list object, we have the data, and then we have this crosstalk element. Uh, you know, it's a list of things, but what we're passing here is the group. Uh, so the, the name of the group from, from the R uh, shared data object. Uh, so anyway, we're, we're setting that in JavaScript. Uh, so that's just so that the JavaScript app in a certain sense is like aware of what's been selected and can have that as a, as a variable that's accessible by, by other things. That's my understanding. Um, so next step is to uh, make it such that the widget can communicate with, with, with another widget. Um, so there's a callback function here. Again, this is something I'm sure is very common within JavaScript, but is just kind of on the, the edges, the, the, the distant edges of my current comprehension of JavaScript. Uh, but uh, es essentially what it, what it does is, you know, in, in the UI as we select a country, it registers the, that 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 country uh, and then passes it um, to this variable the selection selection handle um, and then we're passing that on to uh, to the controller so like on I guess this is kind of like in shiny like uh, with, with event based stuff like on on country picked I think this is a method that's a, that's coming from geo if I remember correctly uh, so then we're passing to the controller the 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 key uh, of the thing selected. Right. So in, in the previous case, when I was selecting Russia or China, I was getting, you know, you can imagine I was getting the key associated with those those countries. Right. So that's for that's for um, Geo to be able to talk with another widget. It needs to be able to tell the other widget, make available through this the uh, a variable, the the in the, the key of the thing that's been selected so that 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 other widget can then kind of react accordingly. Um, so that's for uh, Geo talking to another widget. Uh, sorry, Russ, I, I think I saw your mic come off. The, was there some uh, question? Yeah, go ahead. Whether the, the, um, so we've seen uh, selection handle dot set group, and we've seen selection handle dot set, and 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 this dot set method is to update the keys that are active for that particular group it, 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 in some kind of global way, such that whatever other widget has assigned itself to this group can access those keys as well. Some, something like, um, I think. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 I mean, far, far, far better it, said. <laughs> in, a, in a poorly uh, formulated way. Um, right, okay, okay. So, so dot set is to kind of update the active keys at the moment. Uh, yeah. Okay. yeah. That, at least that's my understanding as well. Uh, I see uh, Lucio has, has his hand raised. Come on in. Yeah, I have one question about how the communication would work if we are using not, not only one geographic, but perhaps two, because um, in, the, in the code, they are defining bar cell handle, but if such variable, if is of global scoping, wouldn't, wouldn't it be the case that 
if one creates one geo widget and, and, there, and there is its HTML output, but then one creates another geo widget. So in the, H, in the HTML, one would have two globes. Wouldn't it be the case that the second cell handle variable would be, no, sorry, the first cell handle variable would be erased and its, its selection, uh, no, sorry, its value now would be the, the, the value when one created a second globe. So I think, I think that in that case, uh, the communication would break, right? Only for the first globe and it would only work for the second one. So I, I'm not sure to be honest. Um, I, I think that w w as, as the, as an R user, you, you pass in, um, the, the name of the group into, you know, when you call your widget function and if the, if you, when you set up your first geo widget, the group name that you use is the same as the group name you use when you set up the second widget, then the selection handles will talk, will, you know, the, the, the widgets will be able to talk to each other. But the, the selection handle is something that's kind of like embedded inside the, um, the, the, the JavaScript code for that, you know, there'll be a separate selection handle embedded in each widget so the, the the one for your first geo object won't be able to talk to your second geo object except through their shared interaction with some global store of what keys are active for that group i, I think I, I i that's what i'm thinking too russ i was actually going to add to that is i think the selection handle it's um so I'd have to look back at my JavaScript, uh, but you know, I, I think that this is not like this doesn't have global visibility uh, across all JavaScript scripts that are running like within within our page, for example. So I think it's I think the controller right here is I think it's it's basically like a method of like emitting the key is a I'm, I'm guessing is like a return value, um, and then I think. So, so that's num number one. And then I think like Russ says, is there's my intuition is that we can kind of like, we can, we can sort of, the group kind of sets a container around, around all of this. So that like the, 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 the selection, the, the key selected is kind of visible only within, only within the, the group. So if you have two geo instances that are, in separate groups, they wouldn't be able to talk to one another. Um, if, if indeed they're, 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 you know, they're kind of like segregated by, by, by group. This is kind of speculation, I guess, but it seems it seems reasonable, I guess, on, on the face of things. Yeah, I don't. I don't know if that helps, Lucio, but <laughs> that's that's kind of my that's 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 my intuition for for now as someone who knows extremely little about JavaScript. Um, but I, I, I'm guessing it it wouldn't like the selection value in one widget wouldn't overwrite that in another widget that's that's unrelated. Um, and then I think um, yeah, and, and then I think the yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll stop. I guess I'll stop there uh, on that. Uh, and then I guess we move to the piece on kind of receiving. So the other bit of code that we need to put in place for, for our geo widget is we need to basically set up almost kind of like a listener um, uh, so that on, on changes, so uh, I guess the geo widget needs to kind of listen for keys that are that are returned from from other widgets within its same group so that it reacts um, and so I guess it's on change in a certain sense here it seems a little redundant I'm guessing it's if 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 the um, if this if the if if the selection is different 
if the selection in widget two is, well, in the widget that's not geo, I'll just call it widget two. So widget one, let's call it geo, widget two, something else. So if, if the selection in widget two is, um, uh, is not the is not the same as the current selection in, in in widget one, then stuff happens. So if if geo were different than it were, um, the author talks a little bit about this at the beginning. Um, uh, then then basically you could kind of reset the selections in, um, in, in 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 widget one and do some maybe some other stuff like the widget. In, in effect, widget one would react, right? Um, if the selection in widget two is the same as the selection, the current selection of widget one, nothing, I guess tacitly, nothing, nothing happens. That's kind of my high level modicum of understanding of, of, of this code. But basically we need to put in place some code in, in, in our, in our geo and I guess our widget one that listens for changes in, 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 in widget two. And, and if there are changes, uh, I guess events in widget two, and if the events are changes with respect to the current state of widget one, then widget one geo needs to needs to react. Does that sound uh, right, Russ? I think I saw some maybe head nodding. I don't know if you, maybe maybe we're both wrong, but. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm 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 not sure. To be honest. <laughs> Uh, and uh, uh, you know, at the end, I I, I can't run this because I, I haven't built up the, the the function geo and and the JavaScript to to handle it. But you can kind of imagine what's what's happening here. Um, in the in the final example uh, here, uh, you know, the author sets up what could be a working example, um, where um, he's just fetching a lot of a lot of prepared uh, trade relationships uh, that could be selected. Um, you know, arcs like we saw before, um, you know, with an exporting exporting country and importing country and then a volume of trade. Um, and then is uh, converting the arcs to, 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 to JSON, um, or say rather converting it to an R data frame. So this is a, a JSON format. Uh, and then uh, we're instantiating a uh, a shared a shared data frame of these arcs, so kind of the import export um, relationships which, between countries. And here, this is something that we mentioned earlier, and we're explicitly setting what the key is. So I guess if if there's, it must be. I've not looked at this in, uh, in uh, crosstalk, but it must be the case that if if there's no key set, then they one takes the row names or, 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 or row indices, but here we're exp we're explicitly setting the the keys. So it's the the importing the importing country will be the keys, uh, and then we're setting up here. Um, uh, this is crosstalk, so it just uses Bootstrap columns um, to set up kind of two like you would in Shiny in a certain sense, uh, two two widgets side by side uh, on one side geo um, with a shared data uh, shared data object. And then on the other side, um, this is a data table um, where only single selections are allowed um, so that you can make selections on the data table side and then geo, geo updates. That, that would be the idea here. And fortunately or unfortunately, I guess fortunately, because we're approaching the hour, <laughs> uh, unfortunately, because it feels a little unsatisfying. Uh, that's, that's all I've, I've, I've got. I, I have to say for this chapter, it, it was, it was really nice to show the intuition, but, um, I don't know if it's just me or if it's the chapter, I, I, I've kind of felt it hard to sort of jump into implementing the, 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 the geo or example, or kind of see immediately how I could, I could do this with other with other apps. Yeah. I think I I need to know more about JavaScript yeah. in order to be successful there. To be honest, it seemed a more complicated example than was needed to illustrate crosstalk, really. Um, but it's kind of building on um, the the example that was used in the previous couple of chapters. Um, so you know, they, they tried to kind of 
elbow it in, I guess. But um, it, well, what I found surprising when working through this chapter that, that was that the unless I unless I can't find it in the GitHub, that, that, that there doesn't seem to be a final finished version of what the code should look like for your GIO widget when it's integrated with crosstalk and um i couldn't find I mean, that either i guess it's probably it's homework for the reader but uh yeah i've i've yet to implement anything to to kind of make this work yet but uh it, it does seem a, a bit confusing because i'm not certain where bits of the functions ought to go and stuff in the job yep yeah, yeah I, I felt the same, Russ. I mean, for for example, some some things are explicit. I guess you know this little chunk right here. Uh, the receive you know, says put it in the function factory. I presume this is being the function factory too, but I'm not so sure about the selection handler. Um, yeah, I mean it, it, it's kind of like a jigsaw puzzle, but I don't see how the pieces fit together. <laughs> to, yeah. to, together, I, I trust that they do, but. Um, not sure exactly how. Ah, Lucio raises hand. Maybe he's got some insights. Yeah, I don't really trust that they that the pieces will match because I was implementing implementing a, a 3GS widget, uh, and I, I arrived at a, a similar problem, like the one I mentioned that whenever an, an instance of the widget is created, there is a global variable that needs to be created as well. When, but I, I encountered this problem that if I only created one widget, everything worked fine. But as soon as I printed two two instances of of the of the same type of widget, only the only the last one worked, and and the and the first one broke because there was a global variable in there that its value had changed. So whenever some interactivity had to happen in the page. Uh, everything was going well only for the second one. Uh, I think that's that's also what would happen in this case because, for example, in section nine point three point three, no, a little up on the eight yeah, there, when he defines the the event listener change for the function set cell handle, he's using in in the if condition also cell handle, but such such variable is defined with bar, so it should be, it should be global. So whenever, for example, in the second geo globe, whenever there is some interaction, it should be checking the value of such global variable. So only of the second. I think that if if one were to implement uh, this solution provided by the book, for example, one would need to change uh, that that condition. Uh, the value cell handle would be one should, uh, should find a way to make it so that the appropriate cell handle is being checked, right? For the appropriate widget that it's being interacted by the user. Yeah, I, I do I do wonder if there's a way, so at least in this example here, we're, we're not passing a group, for example. So, I mean, I wonder if the group kind of somehow encapsulates um, a set of widgets. So like, let's say you have, you know, instance one of geo and instance two of geo. If they're each in their own groups, I wonder if, I wonder if, let's say the value of the selection handler is global, but global within a group, or if it's just glo entirely global. I, yeah, I mean, I, I see the problem I, you're mentioning. Yeah. yeah. When I, when I read that code, I, I mean, I was thinking this would be the selection handle for for a particular instance, but it it's responding to um, events that um, you know any one of the widgets on the page could generate an event called change. Um, and you have to kind of i don't know maybe you have I, I i see what what i found strange was it was like it's responding to an event called change 
so but why does it need to compare whether the the handle sorry so the handle is responding to to an event called change and then it's it's doing something differently if the sender of that event isn't itself but i was wondering why why is it responding to that event if it wasn't itself that 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 sent the event so there's something about this code that i don't quite follow but um presumably it means that every selection handle across every widget is able to respond to all the events that could be generated by any widget and you have to kind of ensure that you only respond to those that are relevant to yourself either from a group level definition or something but um yeah, I, I, I don't, I don't really. <laughs> I'm going to be look, I'm going to be looking at crosstalk and see if uh, see see if like somehow I mean my 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 hope is that by setting a group the group somehow like encapsulates and isolates the interaction just to those widgets within the group that's my hope but I don't know I don't know if that's I don't know if that's the case I don't know if crosstalk can kind of create a like an encapsulated environment just for for the widgets that sit within it um Two sessions of R, I mean, this is maybe a poor analogy, but like two sessions of R don't know anything about one another. Um, anyway, um, that's cool. I, sorry, I, I'm going to wrap it up if that's okay. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, well, I mean, it's a very interesting, a very interesting chapter, but there was a lot of in it, lot in it that, I mean, I, I found confusing, but that might just be myself, but I think a, a few of them. The rest of us have also found concepts in this chapter quite confusing. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it does look quite powerful for kind of using multiple widgets at the same time and accessing different aspects of the same data set for, for different purposes and things. Um, yes, um, so I should wrap up. Um, thanks, Arthur, for the talk. Um, yeah, I mean that was it was it certainly cleared it up from the the times that I've actually read the chapter and been confused because it's quite helpful to be able to talk to someone else who's you know got a different perspective on everything. Um, next week we aren't going to have a a meeting because um, the our studio conference is on and various other things, um, and we're close to the end of this part of the book, um, so we're going to take a week off. Um, and when we come back, we'll do a kind of, uh, we'll, we'll cover the content of chapter 10, but it's quite a short chapter. And we'll do a kind of summary of the content from this part of the book. And if anyone's got any kind of examples that they might have pieced together or kind of things that they're still struggling to understand about this section of the book, um, we'll, we'll discuss them. Um, there was an example of using React R that I found in one of the vignettes for, for that package, which uses code almost identical to the HTML widget setup code to, to generate a, a React based widget. But there's a kind of build step in between it in addition. Um, so I might try and explain that example because it's, it's kind of comparable to the the things we've been doing so far. Um, but that'll be in two weeks' time. And then the following week, we're going to start the shiny section of the book. Um, and um, yeah, it'll get even more complicated then because they'll be co going in every direction. Um, great. Anyway, thanks everyone for coming along. And I look forward to seeing you in a couple of weeks' time. Goodbye. And enjoy our studio conference. Uh, See you later. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. Okay.